Welcome to another episode of How I Edit. This is my series where I transform great images into even greater images. Let's have a quick look. So for this episode, I'm going to transform a great image like this into a greater image like this. So if you're a photographer, or you're a model, I have a special offer for you guys at the end. So stick around, let's get started. So for this shoot, I use the Godox AD600 along with the X1 trigger at quarter power. The strobe is positioned camera right. For my modifier, I used the Glow 24 inch beauty dish. I shot this on my Canon 80D with a Canon 85mm 1.8. My aperture was set at 1.8. My shutter speed set at 1 1600th of a second. And my ISO was set at 100. So we're going to start out in the Adobe Bridge. I'm going to double click on my file to open inside of Photoshop. So now that we are inside of Photoshop, I'm going to do a quick evaluation of the image. The strobe is placed pretty close to the model. So lighting is really good. So we have a few small imperfections, nothing much to talk about. And I, think, I see one thing we got to look at. So let's start by duplicating the layer. I'm going to grab my healing brush. I'm going to start painting away the imperfection. This should be a quick process. Okay, so now that we have removed a few minor blemishes, nothing much to talk about, I'm going to apply some skin softening using one of my custom actions. So I'm going to head over to my actions panel. I'm going to select skin softening. I'm going to hit play to apply that action. Head back over to layers. Okay, so I'm going to change my foreground color to white, decrease the size of my brush. And I'm not going to apply this to the face. And you can see here in my layer mask, the areas where this softening is being applied. So let's just say that I'm using this action and I apply the softening to an area that doesn't need any softening whatsoever. So foreground color set to white, I'm going to paint over the eye. So with this particular action, if I want to remove what was applied, I'll just change the foreground color to black and I'll just paint. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge so layers. I'm going to hit Control and E. Okay, so that merged the layers. So I'm going to head over to Portrait Pro to make some refinements. I'm going to go over to Filter, Anthropix, Portrait Pro. So by default, Portrait Pro finds the faces in the image. It creates the outline around the contour of the face, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and it applies basic softening. However, when I use the software, I like to start from scratch. 
just for a bit more refinement. Okay, so by default, the outline looks pretty good and the softening applied is pretty good. However, I'm gonna delete and start from scratch. I'm gonna hit manually locate the face. Female, I'm gonna use the control key to zoom in and select my point. Same thing for the other eye. Tip of the nose and both corners of the mouth. It's important that you reposition these points or position these points rather. Try to get them as precise as possible. There are tons of features in this software you can use, particularly for adjusting eyebrows. And if these points are off slightly, you can get some undesirable results. Maybe the eye just fine tune it just a bit. And I am going to speed up the process for the selection. Okay, so we're going to start the edits in Portrait Pro. Now, looking at the outline, zoom in just a bit. So it applied some basic softening. My first thing I always do is I turn off the face sculpt because it distorts the face. Sometimes it's a hit or miss, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it on. It did a pretty good job. So I'll adjust the lighting. I'm going to drag this over to the right because the strobe is positioned camera right. And I'm going to take the contrast slider up a bit until I see, I see something that I like. That's fine. And this process is completely subjective. If you want deep shadows, well, you could take the contrast slider all the way. But I'm going to make this a very subtle adjustment. that's fine let's go into the skin softening section uh, let's zoom in a bit so I'm gonna soften the area around the eyes all right 63 look fine but I can take this up all the way and like I said this is completely subjective let's look at it before without Let's take it back to about 63. All right, that looks good. So let's soften up the shadows a bit. Slide this up to about 63 also. This gives me <clears throat> this gives me a better blend. All right, let's pay particular attention to the eyes. I'm going to close this and head down to the eye section and let's brighten the iris just a bit. I'm going to take it up to about, no that's too much. All right this is completely subjective. So let's add a pupil reflection. I'm going to add a big beauty dish. Let's play with the opacity. I'm going to set this to about 30. And that's fine. I'm going to quickly reposition the catch lights with a nudge reflection options. I'm going to try to position it over the existing catch light. All right, that's fine. Let's do the same thing for the other. Let's go up. All right, and that is fine. So now I'm going to apply some makeup. I am not a makeup 
Oh, crashing on. So I'm gonna apply some lipstick. I'm gonna try to match it as best as possible. It's gonna be very subtle. All right, that's fine. And I'm going to attempt to match the color. All right, looks good. Increase the shine just a bit. Head back up to the eyes. And let's select mascara. This is going to be a subtle very subtle application so let's take it up all right that's good let's go to the upper eye shadow this is going to be very subtle also let's take it to about all right that's fine That is fine. Okay, there's a whole lot more things we can do inside of Portrait Pro. We haven't even scratched the surface. So I'm done. We're going to head over to Photoshop. So now that we are back inside of Photoshop. Let's have a quick look at the before and after. So I'm gonna hold Alt, click on the bottom layer, that's our before. And this is where we are at. So to make this image pop just a bit more, we're gonna apply some dodging and burning. I'm gonna grab dodge tool decrease the size of my brush just a bit more and I'm gonna apply some dodging just make this more precise okay good Particularly here. So for my exposure, I have my exposure set at 7%, but I'm also applying this using a pressure sensitive tablet. I rarely use a mouse for these types of edits. Let's zoom out a bit, make brush just a bit bigger so add a little bit of shine to the forehead some here under the chin right under the chin cheeks up on cheeks are good cheekbones yeah la, 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 la. but I digress All right, so now we're going to apply some burning. Grab my burn tool. All right, so zoom in, increase the size of the brush. Darken the lip just a bit. Make the shine pop. Okay. 
much bigger stock in here. So now let's have a quick look, zoom in a bit, at the before and after. Before, and here is the after. So let's enhance this just a bit more. We got a whole lot of blues going on in this image. So I'm gonna use one of my actions that apply a lot. I'm going to apply the blue boost action, which will load a lot. That's gonna enhance the blues. And if you blinked, you missed it. So let's have a quick look at the before and after. Zoom in just a bit. It's so before and after. And we are done. This is what you can do with some basic edits inside of Photoshop and a little help from Portrait Pro Studio. Portrait Studio Pro, Portrait Pro Studio, doesn't matter. All right, thank you for following along this video. Um, just look out for more. Thanks again for watching my video. If you want to follow along, you can download the project files and my actions using the link in the description below. If you're a photographer in Nassau and you want to collab, or even if you're a model looking to build your portfolio, type me in the comment section after you like my page on Facebook or subscribe on YouTube. If you want to see more of my work, follow me on Instagram or visit my website.